do you know, I actually uh, could have used uh, some uh, cut chilies, some chopped chilies because they're just staring at me in front of me. Even though I have said to you that I will be making some hot chicken curry, mind you, I have added a fair bit of chili to my sambal. You know, and uh, so I'm just eliminating it today because I think we have got a few of you in the audience that might like it a little bit milder. So this is why I actually haven't added it uh, to my uh, curry today. So how do you know if the chilies are hot or um, mild? Oh, sure. Um, uh, guess what? You know, when I was growing up in Malaysia, there was it was actually quite hard to tell if the chilies were hot. Quite often you will find that the uh, small chili, the bird chilies, are the hottest. But you know, the proof of the pudding is normally what my, how my mother would taste it is to cut the chili in half and just put it on her tongue, just you know, just a dab like that, and you will find if, if she went, whoa, you know, this is crazy, you know, that obviously means it's a hot chili. Now again, all depends if the chili comes from the same plant. Obviously, happens to be hot, the rest will be hot. You know, if the chili are mix match from different plants, for example, you just have to take a guesswork, you know, just just do a guesswork and say, all right, this chili was hot and I know that the rest will be hot. But today, I know, Matt, you have brought me some uh, Mexican chilies, haven't you? Habaneros and things like that. Oh, my goodness. Jalapenos and habaneros. I can guarantee definitely hot. All right. So if you want your hotter curries, certainly go for those uh, hot. Uh, thank you for those questions. Now to this pan, now that is lovely and aromatic. Again, I apologize to the viewers at home. You can't actually smell it, can you? <laughs> but don't you worry, you will have the recipe okay, in, um, on your screen and you will be able to cook a scrumptious meal yourself. So here we go. Now to this pan, we are simply going to add about 500 grams of uh, uh, chicken. What I have done, I have actually used chicken thigh fillets. Any time that you're going to produce a curry, my, uh, back home, my mother would say, ah, you know, the um, chicken breast fillet has got no flavor. Why don't we just stick with something that has bones? Now, often the whole chicken will be cut up into uh, pieces. The bones and the chicken would be thrown back into the pot to cook and to stew, a bit like a stew, you know, about an hour or so. But I am going to do a, a simply, simple side way, a quick recipe. I have used that some five fillets. That will take about half an hour to cook, maximum. And at the same time, unlike chicken thigh fillets, like my mother would say, they dry up too quickly. This actually will amalgamate all the flavors from the sambal and from all the other ingredients in there and make it lovely and subtle. Proof of the pudding isn't tasting, so just as well you're here. <laughs> now, my Western influence are the potatoes. Of course, so I'm gonna add some potatoes to it. And then to that, you will actually require some salt, which will be roughly about a level, level teaspoon. Because what you'll find is that the sambal actually does have uh, salt in there. Amongst all the other things, it also has salt. So roughly about level a teaspoon. Again, the rule of thumb is, depends on what your family likes, you know. Sometimes less is more because you can always add your own. All right, now to this, we're gonna add some water, which is about, roughly about half a cup of water if you don't want it, you know, uh, uh, too runny. And this will be lovely, just like so. You need that water to actually create that balance between the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients. So that's what you're trying to create here, the happy marriage between, you know, all of these. Oh, wow. This smells beautiful and it's beginning to look fantastic. What we will do now, we will need to put the cover on because to steam anything, obviously, the cover is the best way to steam things. And again, I will put the cover on and then you know what? I am going to then relax for about half an hour. What you have to do to have a taste test in about half an hour, I'm gonna chip off. I'm gonna have a little bit of a drink. See you in a minute. Hey, welcome back. It's been half an hour now. It's been cooking for half an hour. I can smell it, you can smell it. Again, I don't know people sitting at home. <laughs> well, here we go. Oh, so beautiful. One last touch that I want to add to this dish is the coconut milk. You know, the coconut milk, as I was growing up in Kuala Lumpur, oh, 
I grew up with 80 coconut trees. <laughs> yes, in my backyard, actually front yard as well. You know, about 80 coconut trees. Oh, you should see, oh boy, the person who came to climb the coconut tree to get the coconuts was fabulous. But then one day, lightning struck. Can you believe it? Lightning struck, split the coconut tree in half. <laughs> well, guess no more. We don't need to climb the coconut tree to get the coconuts. It was simply split in half, <laughs> all right? So uh, that's where I really was very lucky growing up uh, with coconuts, etc. And this is why I have created the flavor of a mixture of Southeast Asian, Malaysian, and Northern Indian. So that's, that's what you're gonna be tasting today. Can everyone smell it? Whoa, nice. Okay, now the time has come for us to uh, dish uh, this dish. Um, what do you normally, have to remember, coconut milk doesn't require much cooking, all right? It's already ready to go the way it is. So, of course, today's coconut milk came out of a can. I didn't have to go climbing coconut trees, did I? <laughs> all right, let's get uh, cracking here. I have got some rice made up, white rice I'm serving it with, but you suit yourself. Here we go, a ladle, let's plate it up. Yummy, here we go. This is looking absolutely smashing. I think I am going to have a taste of this too. Just looks too good, guys. But the final touch, I'd like to decorate it with a little bit of chili there, just like so. And how about my curry leaves? That looks really nice. And before I'm actually going to ask you to come over, I'm going to have a little taste. Okay, let's have a taste. Mm. Nice. Actually, not too hot. I'm glad I didn't use that chili after all that. And uh, let me just um, uh, clean this up. When you're plating it up, it's always nice to have all those uh, little speckles removed, isn't it? Just to make it a little more appetizing. I am going to invite you over now to come and try my hot chicken curry with potatoes. Camera's still on you. So see you a bit later. Second helping, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> 